Okay, welcome back. And now we're looking at some uh, computer history. Uh, here we have uh, the Sinclair ZX81, which was one of the first uh, computers manufactured by Sinclair, of course, of uh, Sir Clive Sinclair fame. Uh, this was a very basic computer with one kilobyte of memory, uh, no colors, uh, minimal sound, and uh, a very uh, interesting keyboard that uh, had basically no feedback whatsoever. However, you could use uh, it, the keyboard shortcuts to get the basic commands and keywords out. So this was uh, basically suitable only for programming practice. Uh, some games did come out and, and a few utilities as well. An interesting uh, or an important add-on was the 16 kilobyte memory, which you could add at the back of the machine. Uh, this was a, a moderate success, uh, but nothing compared to the follow-up, follow which was the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Now, this was uh, sort of a, a continuation of the ZX81, so it's very simple. Uh, Xilog Z80 based and has a only the minimal uh, connections or ports. So basically there's only power, an ex uh, expansion port, then the TV, and only uh, the tape drive inputs and outputs. For example, it has no power switch, no power light, and uh, no real keyboard, just the uh, usual rubber type affair. Uh, this didn't matter much though, because the, the machine was so cheap that uh, a lot of people wanted to buy it. And uh, for all intents and purposes, for a long time, this was the home computer to use in Britain and also uh, in many Eastern European countries because uh, the Soviets created their unofficial clones of the system and they were widely built behind the Iron Curtain. Uh, missing all these ports of course created some confusion. For example if you wanted a joystick you would need to get an interface. Now here we have the uh, official Sinclair one but uh, there were of course others like the Kempston interface and such and uh, there was very little compatibility between these. Yes, that plugs in the, in the back of the machine. Instead of a disk drive, you could uh, install the micro drive, which was a, an advanced tape uh, drive. It would only run one way, so there was no rewinding, and it was in an endless loop. Uh, this was moderately uh, fast, but rather unreliable. Sinclair also used this in the later machine called QL for Quantum Leap, uh, which was uh, not as popular as the Spectrum and, and died out quite quickly. Spectrum, on the other hand, lived a healthy life and the final version came out uh, towards the end of the decade. Uh, by this time, Sinclair belonged to Amstrad and they uh, released the Spectrum Plus 3, which had a built-in disk drive, a proper keyboard, joystick ports, and the works. But the Spectrum wasn't a success only in Britain. It was also a great success in Finland. It was a great hobbyist machine. And actually, really, believe me, you could program with this keyboard. It was slow, it was hard, but it was possible. A lot of people in Finland learned about programming into with this machine. Well, I learned gaming with this machine. And uh, it was uh, an e excellent thing to have to own. Interestingly, Sinclair Spectrum had a demo skin and had a pirate skin. And I have seen Spectrum demos made in the 90s. Think about it. In the 90s with this machine, okay? We can understand that the uh, Commodore 64 had a demo skin and has a demo skin still, but Spectrum, well, it was a British thing. I don't know any Finnish Spectrum demo groups, but they might have been somebody who did a demo with this. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Spectrum demo in alt party someday.